Hi, I'm Larry Chai, uh, proprietor and co-founder of Moonshine Wines. We're happy today to uh, bring on the scene uh, Philippe Melka, a dear friend and an incredibly gifted winemaker, to cover some selected topics. Uh, as you know, Philippe has been with us since the very start. And uh, 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 over the years, we have... Uh, benefited greatly from this collaboration, um, have, have uh, traveled together, worked together, uh, nearly, nearly been thrown in jail together a couple of times. <laughs> and from that, uh, from that we, have, we, have, we have quite a history. So, so, um, so Philippe, thank you for joining us. I know you're on your way to Chile fairly soon, but uh, have a variety of, of topics uh, to cover. Uh, I'll save the, the best uh, for the last, you know, where'd you get those shoes? But no. <laughs> Cold <laughs> boots. <laughs> I, how did I know that? How did I know that? Uh, so so uh, a- anyway, um, you know, Philippe, I get questions all the time, of course, uh, especially from folks who know and appreciate uh, and uh, honor you as a winemaker with the many different uh, touches that you apply to wineries all through your portfolio. But I always get this question. What, what is it about Moon Chai that wines that stands out for you and, and your approach? What makes them particularly fun and interesting and special for you to, to be involved? Well, I mean, it's always, uh, it's funny that you ask me these questions because uh, I always uh, have the same questions basically coming from uh, uh, the customers that sometimes uh, are linked to the whole, what I call the Atelier Melka portfolio and all the, the, the winners and friends that we are involved with. They always ask, uh, what makes the difference? I mean, what, why are you, uh, how basically are you manage all those people, of course, but more importantly, how can you create a difference? Uh, and then I always say um, that the beauty of, uh, I would say, um, making, being involved in a winemaking because you have, of course, the very technical and, and more uh, production aspect of it, but you have also a very creative way of making wines. We can make wines in many different ways. And so for me, um, uh, I think the important part is that why we are really um, our big fan about uh, Moon size, like because I need to have a story to have the foundation of being able to have the creativity of, uh, of doing something. So to do that, I need to really connect with people. And I need to really have a sense of, uh, we really both really involve 100% into this. And we want to really go all the way with the story. We want to reach the dead, the finish line, sorry. So when we start, we want to be ready for going through the marathon of the basically the venture that we are connected, both of us. And it's a marathon, so it takes a lot of time, energy, there is those up and downs, there is a reflection of why making, there is everything basically we can we could think about to to achieve a goal to reach the finish line and hopefully to be first or at least to be happy about what we achieved. And so this connection and this partnership, I would say, it's, I think, the key of the success at the end. And to answer more directly to your questions about Munsai, you know, when I started with, um, with you two, because, of course, Larry, you're working with Marianne as well, um, uh, I would say what I love it was like it started with a tradition of winemaking. And traditional winemaking in Napa Valley, which for me, you know, coming in the early 90s was Cabernet Sauvignon and Chardonnay. So it started there. We have those kind of two anchors, I will say, uh, to work with. And then the evolution, of course, uh, went to how can we still excite the brain of the consumer? And that's where we always kind of connected together to really have this deep reflection because we're all living it. We are like consumers as well. So how can we really show the consumers the evolution of Napa Valley as well and excite their brain? So I think the portfolio of Munsai, uh, that's why I love the most, is so diverse. Uh, you have basically those two Cabernet Sauvignon who are very different to each other. That's how we started with the hillside of Hal Mountain, something at 1,800 feet. We wanted muscle, we wanted 
you know, tannic structure. We wanted tension. We wanted like a, a gentle beast in a way. And then we have the Corleonis where we have this kind of really more feminine approach, uh, a, a more sophisticated approach, I would say. Uh, a wine who can be a, more like the international wine, who's going to really please all kinds of different palettes from Asia to Europe. That's also the, this product, I think, very important when you, you work in Napa. And the Chardonnay, which because I feel like even coming from Bordeaux, and we laugh a lot about this many times. <laughs> That's why we went to Burgundy together, because I needed to learn about also Chardonnay. Uh, was really to show that uh, the tradition of Napa, it's always about, it's also, sorry, about uh, white wine and, and uh, a Chardonnay that we feel like reflect a little bit, you know, the tradition of Napa uh, by being, you know, obviously rich and boldy, but also with a lot of vibrancy and finesse. So it's always trying to kind of work with a yin and a yang on the Chardonnay. Uh, I think the Chardonnay in general, um, it's uh, at least for me, um, that's what I learned the most over the years. Uh, because coming from Bordeaux, of course, and being such a, a Cabernet and Merlot and Cabernet Franc and other classic Bordeaux grapes focus, uh, I, I had a lot to learn about Chardonnay in California. And uh, with always the thinking, that's what, again, with you guys, uh, how really, what the consumer is looking for, what the consumer is really want to drink, what the consumer feel like is, is the best pairing between this Chardonnay, this product, and the type of food that the world is eating right now. So I feel like we reached something fun. Uh, and to finish, sorry to being very long with one question is, uh, I think we brought, talking about fun, we brought this fun into this business because that's the recipe of success and long term. Uh, we brought the blacklist kind of, you know, series. Uh, and I think that part was brought in in a perfect timing where the consumer are starting to really want to, to get new product or trying to see something else uh, from the Moonside, you know, portfolio. Uh, <clears throat> I, <laughs> yeah. You've caught me almost speechless, something yeah. that's rare for me. And, and yeah. yet really what you touched on, and this is really central, to, I think, to an effect of collaboration. Um, there, is, there is the notion of, uh, of, of fun, of challenge, surprises, um, this is all the makings of a great collaboration. We don't always agree, but we don't have to. And when we don't agree, sometimes that becomes the genesis of some exciting new directions. You know, this this whole blacklist thing, oh my gosh, I, th I think that every year when we have to come up with three totally brand new wines that we've never made before, that we'll make only once, I sometimes, I sometimes think, oh my gosh, are we stretching too far? And yet what we see is really... I think the epitome of what makes you great. You're creative, uh, you, you, are, you rise up to the challenge and you bring your team together in a way that brings them up to the challenge well so that every blacklist wine that comes out there, one of a kind and brilliant.